All right, so you know those types of questions that your teacher just loves to give on the test or exam, even though they may have never given them to you during the class period, or maybe they just showed the example once and then focused on something completely different for the rest of the time, and then all of a sudden they just pop up on a test. Well, in this video, what I wanna do is kinda of go over three different problems that a lot of times don't get a lot of attention, like more basic examples that we'll work through throughout a lesson. And sometimes you show up on a test, sometimes we give these as just a challenge or an extension, but either way, they highlight some important understanding that we need to know when simplifying our radicals. So if you're kind of interested to see what exactly I'm talking about, let's go and take a look at some three examples that add a little twist into sometimes what students are used to. All right, now in this first example, I have the square root of 4a squared plus 4a plus 1. And if students are kind of struggling or they maybe kind of forgot, they'll see the 4 and the a squared and they recognize, hey, I can take the square root of those numbers in addition to the number 1. So what they'll simply do is do the one of the more common mistakes that I've referenced before is they'll distribute the square root across addition and subtraction. And the reason why students want to do this is because they see the 4a squared and the 1 and they recognize, well, I can take the square root of those. So why don't we just go and do that? Because if they were separated by multiplication, we can do that. But it doesn't work like that. And again, I can just give you a quick little example here. If I had the square root of 9 times, let's say, square root of 4, if they're separated by multiplication, well, we know that's the square root of 36. And the square root of 36, we know, is 6. Just like we could say this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, which is 3 times 2, which is also equal to 6. However, if I break this up across addition instead of multiplication, so I had the square root of 9 plus 4. Well, that's equal to the square root of 13. However, if I was to separate this, that'd be the square root of 9 plus the square root of 4, and that's going to be a 3 plus 2. That does not equal the square root of 13. So it doesn't work across addition and subtraction. It does work across multiplication and division. Then what are we going to do for a problem like this? Because the main thing that we need to take away from our simplifying our expressions is no matter what our index is, so in this case, we're taking a square root, technically you're going to have two there. So that means I can take the square root of anything raised to the second power. Now this whole expression is not being raised to the second power. However, I do recognize this to be a perfect square trinomial. So by factoring this as a binomial squared, I have now just raised it to a power of two. So this problem is good because it is a way to make sure that students understand how to break up your radicals and to simplify them, but it also takes some knowledge of factoring to make sure that you can recognize this is a perfect square trinomial and to factor it as a binomial squared. Now, the square root of this expression raised to the second power is just going to leave me with a final answer of 2a plus 1. And there you go. Now, in this example, what we have is a square root of a square root, which is a lot of times we call a nested square root. So we have a square root inside of another square root. Now, there's a couple different ways to be able to approach a problem like this. And especially as you get into more complicated examples, there's some other techniques. The main thing that we want to see from this example is to be able to follow your order of operations properly. And one thing that we can take away from understanding the order of operations is to always do the most inside operation first. What I mean by that is, let's say I had a two times a one minus a four minus five. Now, if I was gonna follow the order of operations, I'm gonna do the most inside parentheses first, right? So that two is multiplied by this whole expression, but I'm gonna simplify the inside parentheses first. I'm not gonna distribute the two here, nor am I gonna subtract the one minus four. You're gonna work from the innermost parentheses first, and therefore four minus five is gonna be a negative one. So I'll have a two, one minus a negative one, and now again, I'm going to simplify this parentheses before I go ahead and multiply by the two. So, and this ends up being one minus a negative one, which is going to be a two. So two times two, which ends up equaling four. So in this example, I'm gonna work on the same thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of treat these as like parentheses, because when you are taking the square root, you're taking the square root of an argument, which is under the radical. So by using some parentheses here, we can work from the innermost operation first. Now, there's nothing I can do with 16x to the fourth, y to the fourth, or I can simplify the square root of that expression. So what I'll do is I'll just rewrite it with a bigger radical and then kind of a smaller radical. And now I can simplify this to a four squared and then using the power rule as a x squared squared and a y squared squared. And now we can go ahead and simplify this. But again, I'm going to leave it inside of the parentheses. 
And now I didn't rewrite the parentheses because we don't really need them. We're now just taking the square root of the argument with this expression, which is going to leave me with a two x y. All right, in the last example, which is a little bit of a dirty trick, a lot of times we won't spend time with dealing with fractions. We won't spend time dealing with decimals. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, here's this number. Don't forget about these. Now I might be to blame once or a couple of times of doing this. And I don't always mean it as a gotcha type of question, but I think it is important for students to actually understand what it is they're trying to do to make sure and always remember or don't forget different types of numbers like fractions and decimals. So in this problem, you know, we can see the indexes to the fourth power rather than just giving up and saying, I don't know how to take decimals or we didn't work on decimals. Let's go back and understand what is it we know about decimals that we can understand. And I think for me, the one thing is we can always rewrite our decimals as a fraction. Now, sometimes rewriting a decimal as a fraction can kind of be a little difficult. But one thing I recognize here is if I multiply this by 100, that's going to move my decimal spot over two units. So if I multiply by 10,000, then I'm going to move it over 10 more units. Now, I just can't randomly multiply a number by a 10,000. But as long as I multiply the top and the bottom by 10,000, then I'm keeping what we call an equivalent expression. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 10,000 and the numerator, and I'm going to multiply by 10,000 in the denominator. Now that's gonna give me a 16 over 10,000. Now again, remember the rules of radicals allow us to break up the radical across a multiplication as well as division. So I can take this fourth root and I can rewrite that to the numerator as well as to the denominator. Okay, so the cool thing about the fourth root, there's not that many numbers that are pretty small that we can figure out because once you multiply something by itself four times, you're gonna get pretty big numbers. So when I have 16, I only have a couple of options, right? One, two, and three, I would list on my short list. And again, if you look at this, do a little thinking, then you can see that, yeah, two raised to the fourth power is indeed 16. So the fourth root of 16 is going to equal a two. Now, the same thing for 10,000. Like I can only multiply a number so many times. And again, with 10,000, I'm looking at a, a 10 or really a hundred. And when you multiply something four times, you can see I'm going to get four zeros, which would make sense for 10 being raised to the fourth power. So the fourth root of 10,000 is going to equal a 10. So now I have a two divided by 10. And mostly when we're doing a problem and we're given something in decimals, we should always write our answer back in decimals. So two divided by 10 is going to give me a point two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are some challenge problems to hopefully complement some of the other examples that we've worked through in these lessons. But if you want to see just more examples of practicing simplifying radical expressions, then go ahead and check down my examples down below or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.